So, uh, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Liviu Gheorghiu. I'm a senior manager in the Mazars uh, transfer pricing team. Um, I'm very happy that we have this uh, opportunity to discuss about the Romanian transfer pricing legislation. Uh, I'm here together with my colleague, Lucian Dumitru, who is uh, specialized in transfer pricing and direct taxation. Um, we will discuss uh, about a few topics regarding the transfer pricing uh, legislation and practice in Romania. First, we will focus on the provision of the Romanian legislation and an overview of the requirements uh, that companies must fulfill in terms of uh, transfer pricing in Romania. Uh, and in the second part, uh, we will also discuss about the practice of the Romanian uh, transfer pricing audit, uh, which uh, I know uh, a very large number of uh, local companies are facing right now, because there has been uh, an important increase uh, in the last uh, years in this uh, respect. So first, um, let me just make um, a very uh, brief overview of the local legislation in terms of uh, transfer pricing. And now, um, it is important to mention that Romania is actually not an OECD member state. Uh, but, however, uh, the OECD transfer pricing guidelines are applicable according to the Romanian legislation. Uh, the Romanian requirements in terms of transfer pricing have existed uh, since almost 2003 uh, and they are actually based on the provisions of the OECD transfer pricing guidelines. Uh, according to the legislation, the guidelines are part of the local legislation. So, uh, in case uh, a company wants to prepare the local file, or uh, in case of a transfer pricing audit, um, the OECD transfer pricing guidelines should be uh, fulfilled, should be followed. Uh, now, also uh, as a general information, uh, Romania is a member of the European Union uh, since 2007. Um, for this reason, um, most of the uh, most of the companies investing in Romania are uh, companies from uh, EU countries, uh, and the European Union is of course uh, the most important uh, trading partner uh, of uh, of Romania. Uh, typically, uh, Romania is an inbound investment country, uh, and uh, a very large number of, of uh, multinational companies have subsidiaries in, in Romania. Um, if, you, if you were to talk about the industry uh, with, uh, with the biggest development in the uh, last few years, we can mention the IT industry, uh, also the, the pharma sector, uh, agriculture, oil and gas, energy. Um, these are just a couple of, of the industries where we, we see uh, large multinational companies investing in Romania and of course we, we also see uh, transfer pricing uh, issues uh, regarding the, the transactions that uh, these, uh, these companies and these groups have with, uh, with their local uh, subsidiaries. Uh, now in terms of the applicable legislation, uh, as I mentioned, the OECD guidelines are the basis for the Romanian legislation. Uh, the methods provided by the OECD guidelines uh, are applicable in Romania. Um, also, uh, an important thing is that uh, starting with 2010, uh, the local legislation uh, provides that transactions between local Romanian companies uh, are also within the scope of transfer pricing uh, regulations. Uh, so, um, Transactions between Romanian related parties are also scope of the uh, local transfer pricing file. Um, in terms of uh, the other uh, pieces of legislation, uh, of course the, the, the main 
the main tax legislation is the Romanian Fiscal Code. Uh, and here uh, we also have uh, Article 11, which provides basically for the application of the arm's length principle. Uh, and, then we, and then we have the uh, methodological norms for the application of the Fiscal Code, where we have some uh, additional information regarding the methods uh, uh, that can be used um, uh, to, to analyze and to document uh, related party transactions. Um, in terms of the um, specific pieces of legislation uh, regarding the content of the transfer pricing file, we have Order 2022 from 2008 which provides the content of the transfer pricing uh, file that must be prepared locally by companies operating in Romania. And then we have uh, this uh, new piece of legislation, Order uh, 442 from 2016, um, which uh, has uh, uh, brought a number of changes uh, that I would like to discuss uh, further on. What is important to mention is that both uh, orders uh, have, have taken, let's say, the, the structure uh, from the OECD uh, transfer pricing guidelines as well. So uh, if we are talking about the content of the local uh, file, uh, you will see that in, in practice this is quite similar uh, to what is required in other uh, EU countries or other OECD uh, countries. Uh, what what, uh, what uh, some uh, might find interesting is that uh, a part of the information which is generally required uh, to be included in the master file uh, documentation is actually required to be included in the local file uh, in Romania. So this is uh, something that is not uh, applicable in, in all countries. Also, in terms of the, of the legislation, um, uh, companies operating in Romania have the possibility to conclude uh, an advance uh, pricing agreement with the Romanian tax authorities. And there is a piece of legislation uh, that uh, defines how uh, this agreement should be reached with the Romanian uh, authorities and uh, what type of documentations uh, documentation should companies uh, submit in order to to obtain this agreement. I will also talk uh, about this uh, later on. Now I, I will I will <coughs> I will switch to um, to the provisions of this order 442 uh, from 2016 because this piece of legislation was introduced. Uh, in order to somehow align the local legislation with uh, the requirements of the PEPS uh, action plan. Um, first of all, what the Romanian uh, authorities did for the first time since uh, there is uh, a TP legislation is that the, they included uh, some uh, significant thresholds in terms of the uh, intragroup uh, transactions. Uh, and uh, by doing so, they split it somehow the taxpayers into two categories. First, we have the large taxpayer uh, category, uh, which is uh, communicated uh, on an yearly basis by enough, uh, depending on uh, the financial results of the companies, uh, you can fall into this category of large taxpayers. So for, for, these, uh, for these large taxpayers, that have intra-group transactions above the significant, uh, significant thresholds that you see in column two, in the second column, uh, meaning uh, 200,000 euros for interest, uh, 250,000 euros for services, and 350,000 euros for uh, transactions with products. Uh, so if you are above these uh, thresholds, then uh, you need to prepare the transfer pricing file on a yearly basis and to have uh, the file ready when you submit the annual corporate tax return. So this, uh, this has been the biggest change uh, 
brought by, by this new piece of legislation and it's affecting a very large uh, number of companies. Uh, in 2016 we had approximately 1,400 companies qualifying as large taxpayers while in 2017 uh, once the uh, criteria for qualifying uh, in this category have changed the, the number has increased to around uh, 3,000 uh, companies. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, emphasize the fact that uh, for this category of taxpayers there is no requirement to actually submit uh, the transfer pricing file to the tax authorities but the file needs to be ready when the annual corporate tax return is uh, submitted uh, uh, because otherwise if uh, the tax uh, inspectors come uh, to audit the company then the company only has maximum 10 days uh, to, to prepare uh, and to provide uh, the file. Uh, so this is, uh, this is the, the new requirement for, for large taxpayers and as I mentioned it affects a very large uh, number of companies, especially uh, companies part of large uh, multinational groups operating in Romania. Um, for the other categories of, of taxpayers, uh, there are no significant thresholds uh, in terms of uh, value of transactions uh, and the requirement is to uh, prepare the annual uh, transfer pricing report. Again, uh, these companies uh, don't have to submit uh, the report to the tax authorities uh, but in case of a transfer pricing uh, audit uh, there is a deadline uh, between 30 and 60 days to provide the reports to the tax authorities uh, and of course this deadline can be extended with an additional uh, of maximum 30 days. Uh, in the past uh, there was no uh, separation made between large taxpayers and other categories of taxpayers and uh, generally the, the deadline to submit the, the report was between one and three months uh, with the possibility to extend uh, this deadline with an additional uh, one month. So if we compare this, uh, the new requirements with uh, what happened in the past, we can see that uh, now the deadlines are quite strict uh, and short, especially for large taxpayers. Uh, the reason for, for these measures was first of all to align uh, the Romanian legislation with uh, the recommendations from uh, Action 13 uh, BEPS uh, but also uh, the local authorities uh, considered that uh, since the requirement to prepare the file exists from 2003 uh, companies uh, should now be used to, to prepare the transfer pricing file and this uh, should not be a, a novelty for, for them. Again, um, for the first time in the, in the local legislation we have uh, also some minimum significance thresholds uh, which are uh, 50,000 euros for interest, uh, interest uh, 50,000 euros for services and 100,000 euros for transactions with goods. Uh, if a company, either a large taxpayer or uh, from another category of taxpayers, if a company has transactions below uh, these values, uh, then uh, such uh, transactions should not be analyzed uh, as part of the local transfer pricing uh, report. Um, in terms of the, uh, of the actual transfer pricing audits, my colleague Lucian will, will present you uh, a few practical cases. What I can mention is that uh, in the last three or four years, the number of uh, transfer pricing audits has increased significantly. Uh, and now the Romanian authorities are really focusing on, on this area, uh, of course, uh, in order to to, to check if the companies fulfill the, uh, the, the requirements for their intra-group uh, transactions.
because we discussed uh, about uh, the BEPS action plan, uh, I would like to go further and see what other changes uh, have been triggered in the, in the Romanian legislation uh, by uh, the BEPS uh, measures. And because uh, we are talking about transfer pricing, I will uh, refer in particular to Action 13 of the BEPS action plan. Um, as I mentioned, the, the first major uh, change was the introduction of mandatory transfer pricing files for all category of, of taxpayers with uh, transactions above the uh, minimum significance thresholds with uh, a particular focus on large taxpayers that uh, have the obligation to have the file ready when they submit the corporate uh, annual tax uh, return. Uh, now, uh, uh, taking the requirements from Action 13, there have been also uh, changes in the information that needs to be uh, included in the local file. And you can see in this slide, uh, let's call them the new sections, the new sections of the local uh, transfer pricing file. So this is information that needs to be included in the uh, in the local file starting with uh, 2016. Um, we can very shortly go through uh, each section. So uh, now all companies uh, operating in Romania should include information uh, on the main functions performed, the risk assumed and asset use that significantly contribute to generating uh, added, added value uh, at the level of each related uh, party within the group. This is a, an information that is required uh, now to be included in the local file um, because we know that this uh, uh, behind, let's say, this information there is a very uh, detailed uh, and time-consuming analysis that must be performed at group level. Uh, we, we don't know at this time if all the local companies in Romania will have access to this. Uh, but we will see uh, in the future how the tax authorities will react to this, uh, to this section and if they will uh, insist on receiving this information from the, the local companies. Uh, then um, we have um, um, the localization and identification of uh, the related parties and permanent establishments within the group. This information, this list let's say it needs to be included in the uh, in the local file information on potential restructurings carried out at group level Pres uh, presentation of um, cost contribution uh, arrangements uh, so these 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 type of arrangements need to be uh, presented separately uh, in the local uh, transfer pricing file uh, then a presentation of the main uh, markets uh, where the local company uh, delivers its products or provides services. Um, a particular focus on the group research and development activity. So this activity uh, in line with, act with Action 13 needs to be described uh, within the report. Again, we don't know the extent of, of uh, which the authorities will ask for detailed information about this uh, uh, R&D activity of the group or if they will be satisfied with just uh, some, some basic general information. Um, again, uh, a new section refers to the uh, transfer pricing policy in respect to financial uh, arrangements, uh, intra-group financing uh, carried out between group companies. So the authorities want to see how uh, the group is, is being financed and how the activity of the Romanian company is being financed. Uh, then we have some, uh, some uh, information which relates uh, more to uh, the way the actual analysis is performed. So again, for the first time in the legislation, uh, there is uh, uh, an article that allows companies to perform uh, uh, multi-year analysis. Um, so, for example, you can cover, uh, let's say, a period 2012-2015 uh, 
15 and use uh, the weighted uh, data, weighted uh, indicators for the, for the period. But you have to explain uh, in the report uh, why you preferred uh, to, to use uh, a multi-year analysis as compared to a year-by-year -year, uh, analysis. Uh, this was a, an issue in the past because uh, the local authorities were used to uh, a year-by-year -year analysis. Uh, and actually, uh, a very large number of uh, transfer pricing audits uh, were made because some taxpayers were uh, outside the range uh, within one isolated year uh, as compared to uh, a period of, of three or four years where the weighted uh, indicator was within the range. Um, another uh, element that uh, affects the actual transfer pricing analysis refers to um, uh, the data uh, that can be used uh, to, to make the analysis, to make the, the benchmark studies. So now, for example, the law provides very clearly uh, that data to be comprised in the transfer pricing documentation uh, is the one that is reasonable, reasonably available at the time of performing the analysis. So, for example, uh, if we have the requirement to uh, provide the authorities with the file for 2016, uh, the, the authorities must accept the fact that now, at this time, uh, when we prepare the file, there is no information available uh, for 2016 in most of the databases that, uh, that we used. Um, these are the, uh, let's say, the main uh, new information that needs to be uh, included in the local file. Uh, what is important to mention is that at this time, uh, the master file and the country-by-country country, uh, reporting, which are part of Action 13, uh, are not required under the, the local legislation. So there is no requirement at this time for companies to, pre to prepare or to present either the master file or the country by country reporting. We are expecting uh, that the legislation will change uh, in, uh, uh, in the future in order to be aligned with the, the initiatives that uh, have been taken at EU level. And these documents will uh, also be required, but at this time there is no requirement to present them. Uh, I wanted to go uh, very quickly um, through uh, the requirements regarding the advanced pricing uh, agreements, the APAs, uh, because uh, uh, a significant number of companies in, in operating in Romania are interested in, in obtaining uh, an, uh, an agreement from the tax authorities. Uh, in order to, to mitigate or to reduce the risk in case of a transfer pricing audit. Um, so there is the possibility to obtain such an agreement from um, the local tax authorities. Um, the legislation uh, concerning the APAs was again uh, prepared uh, based on the uh, requirements of the OECD transfer pricing guidelines. Um, it is important to, to mention that uh, similar to the OECD approach, such agreements can only be obtained for future transactions, for transactions that, are, um, that will take place in the future, and the Romanian authorities uh, will not accept to provide such agreement for a transaction that has been uh, uh, has taken place uh, also uh, in the past. Uh, the process is, uh, is quite basic. Uh, the taxpayer needs to uh, submit a formal uh, request to the tax authorities. Uh, prior to this uh, formal request, uh, it is recommended that uh, a meeting is set between the uh, taxpayer uh, and the tax authorities. And in most cases within uh, this meeting, uh, you can uh, get a feeling of uh, whether or not the authorities will accept um, 
uh, the ABA uh, or not. Um, after the formal request is submitted, a separate documentation uh, should be also submitted, um, analyzing uh, and documenting the transaction uh, in question. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, there is the issue of the cost because the Romanian uh, tax authorities charge a fee of uh, 20,000 euros um, for issuing the APA for large taxpayers and uh, 10,000 euros for the other uh, categories of taxpayers. However, if the APA is not uh, granted uh, by the authorities, then the taxpayer can, uh, can get his money uh, back uh, at the end of the process. So the, the fee is, is charged at the beginning and only if the APA is granted uh, the money will be will be paid uh, to the authorities. Uh, after the documentation is submitted, uh, the authorities analyze uh, the documentation, uh, and there is uh, uh, there are uh, generally additional questions, meetings with the authorities in order to clarify uh, all the uh, issues regarding the, the transaction uh, and the method used to, to analyze. Um, similar to other uh, countries, uh, uh, the APA uh, can be either unilateral or bilateral. Uh, um, the, the entire process to grant the, the APA cannot take longer than one year. Uh, this is important, one year from the, the date uh, the formal request was uh, submitted. Uh, and uh, the APA has a validity of uh, maximum five years with the possibi possibility to extend uh, the period to up to seven years uh, in case uh, the transaction is um, focused on um, long-term uh, contracts. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, a very large number of companies are trying to uh, opt for this uh, APA alternative because uh, the transfer pricing audits are quite tough uh, in, in Romania and the authorities are uh, quite aggressive in most of the cases and this is why um, taxpayers do not know what to expect uh, after the, uh, the tax audit. Uh, and in this respect, I will uh, um, ask my colleague Lucian to present you some very interesting information about the practice of uh, transfer pricing audits in uh, Romania. Yeah, so as my colleague Liviu uh, said in, in the introduction, this uh, second uh, section of the presentation is aimed at highlighting a couple of um, experiences uh, that we have come across during our assistance uh, during transfer pricing audits um, and also a couple of um, specific aspects that should be taken into consideration uh, by Romanian taxpayers uh, even prior to a, to a tax audit. Um, so, as mentioned uh, in the introduction, transfer pricing uh, is nowadays the hot potato of uh, tax audits, um, not just uh, in, uh, in the European Union, but also uh, specifically um, in Romania. And we have seen that during general tax audits, the transfer pricing issue comes up uh, um, usually every time. So how can a transfer pricing uh, audit be initiated? Usually the um, tax authorities are performing uh, a risk analysis using a proprietary tool developed uh, within the uh, tax authority which is based on several criteria for assessing the actual risk from a transfer pricing perspective of a taxpayer. 
um, there are uh, a lot of criteria. What we know of um, is with, with respect to uh, companies that incur continued operating losses for uh, for a, a big period of time or operational results that fluctuate, fluctuate um, over uh, a certain period of time or companies that have delays in the payment of their tax liabilities uh, are the first on the list of the tax authorities uh, based on their internal risk assessment. Additionally, there, there are, of course, uh, some um, other criteria which they use when preparing the risk matrix, but um, these do not represent the, the public information. So, um, if based on this risk assessment, uh, a taxpayer is categorized with a high risk, he will most certainly then not be subject to a, to a, tech, to a transfer pricing audit. Um, the, second, uh, the second phase is with respect to transfer pricing audits performed on a sector-wide uh, Basis. For example, in, in the last uh, couple of years, we had um, a wave of transfer pricing audits to almost all companies within a specific economic sector. For example, uh, in the last two years, we had the retail industry, for which about 90% of the taxpayers, of the large taxpayers, have been, uh, uh, have been audited on transfer pricing. Uh, nowadays, uh, it is envisaged uh, uh, um, sector-wide uh, transfer pricing audit on banking and insurance. So this may be uh, uh, this is a specific uh, this is a specific uh, assessment that the tax authorities do, irrespective of their initial risk assessment on each taxpayer. Uh, another case when transfer pricing audits are uh, initiated uh, is during a VAT refund inspection. So, a lot of uh, Romanian taxpayers uh, request uh, VAT refunds from the Romanian state uh, and prior to their refund, the tax authorities uh, will come and uh, initiate uh, an inspection on VAT. Uh, but in most of the cases, in order to delay the payment of that VAT to the taxpayer, they will also request the transfer pricing file. Through this measure, uh, the VAT refund is uh, effectively uh, frozen and uh, will be finalized only once the transfer pricing audit is going to be, uh, to be finalized. Um, so this uh, uh, this specific uh, transfer pricing audit, as I told you, is very very common for uh, most of the taxpayers that request large sums of VAT refund. Um, a second, uh, a final case when uh, transfer pricing audits are initiated is with respect to following an unannounced tax audit. So, an unannounced tax audit is uh, like a, a flash audit where the tax authorities come to the headquarters of a taxpayer without prior notice and for a couple of days or uh, one, two weeks, they just request information on, the, on a lot of aspects, transactions of the, of the taxpayer, uh, taxable position, um, they also request the taxpayer to uh, fill in a matrix with respect to uh, their intergroup transactions. And following uh, the closing of these uh, flash tax audits, usually, as we've seen in practice, the first thing that the tax authorities do is submit a notice to the taxpayer to prepare the transfer pricing file. So, um, 
the the flash uh, text audit is just a way for the tax authorities to gather information and then and as we have seen uh, in practice they gather information speci um, uh, more specifically on related party transactions going forward um, we have some specific aspects that we would like to highlight and to have into consideration uh, regarding the transfer pricing audit environment in Romania. First of all, as we've seen in practice, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, multinational groups uh, just rely on the fact that uh, at the group level there is a master file prepared and they can use it uh, uh, for during tax audits uh, um, wherever their subsidiaries are located. Uh, however, based on our legislation and uh, the practice of the tax authorities, a master file per se cannot be used as a, doc uh, as a justifying documents for transfer pricing purposes in Romania. Of course, a master file can, be, uh, can represent the basis of uh, um, transfer pricing file in Romania, but it must be localized uh, specifically to the transfer pricing requirements, um, uh, legal transfer pricing requirements in Romania, uh, as my colleague Liviu detailed previously. Uh, second, your Romanian taxpayer should have in mind the fact that all the documentation, so the local file and all supporting information must be presented in Romanian language. Therefore, we had uh, a lot of cases uh, during a transfer pricing audit um, when the tax authorities requested the translation of invoices, of contracts, of um, different documents into Romanian language. And as you can imagine, uh, during a transfer pricing audit, the question of time is very important and um, the taxpayer had to, to, to provide such documentation under a very tight deadline. Going forward, uh, another, another thing to consider is that uh, like the master file prepared at group level cannot be used as is for local, for Romanian transfer pricing purposes, neither the, uh, the benchmarking studies that are prepared at group level cannot be used as is. This is due mainly to the fact that um, there are specific uh, Romanian thresholds with respect to uh, considering a comparable company related or independent. For example, uh, in more specifically in Romania, we have a 25% shareholding threshold above which companies are considered uh, related parties as compared with uh, usually Western Europe where uh, this threshold is much higher at 50%. Consequently, uh, benchmarkings prepared at group level, which present independent comparable companies uh, with uh, shareholding uh, above this 20, 25%, uh, will not be considered for Romanian purposes. Uh, going forward, the subject of intra-group services. Intra-group services are usually uh, invoiced to subsidiaries, as we've seen also to Romanian subsidiaries, on a cost plus uh, basis. Uh, in practice, the tax authorities are not challenging so much the, the price and the way in which uh, these intra-group services are, uh, are invoiced, for example, cost plus 5% markup, 
yeah because usually the local benchmarking studies can cover these uh, these markups but uh, the tax authorities uh, um, are invoking uh, some aspects which relate in fact to corporate tax uh, and consider that uh, most uh, often than not consider these um, these intra-group services as non-deductible expenses for corporate income tax purposes. So from this perspective, we are talking about uh, a double analysis. So an analysis on price and the type of remuneration and the benchmark with the, with the, the market. And second, uh, uh, benefit test analysis which provides justification of why these services were acquired by Romanian taxpayers from the group so they were not actually imposed and um, uh, proof that the intra-group services were actually provided uh, to the benefit of the Romanian taxpayer. Um, Regarding the transparency, as we've seen, uh, uh, there, is a, there is a general trend of increasing transparency for fiscal purposes. Uh, and Romania is aligned with that. Uh, this means that uh, Romanian tax authorities have an increased transparency and access to information regarding uh, taxpayers from other countries. What we've seen in practice is that uh, the Romanian tax authorities, when coming to a Romanian taxpayer during a transfer pricing audit, uh, also look at the counterparties, so the related parties with uh, whom the Romanian taxpayer is performing transactions. Why is this important? Because, for example, a Romanian taxpayer may be in a loss position and its related transactions represent a, a majority proportion or uh, maybe totally a proportion of transactions performed by that taxpayer. Uh, and if the tax authorities look at the non-resident party which is in a um, profit position, they will ask questions as to why the Romanian subsidiaries is incurring losses while the, its client or its, uh, its related party client or its related party uh, supplier is uh, generating a profit from that transaction. Um, Another aspect to be taken into, into consideration is with respect to the functional profile. What the tax authorities uh, generally do, they initially review the transfer pricing file prepared by the taxpayer uh, with respect to uh, who bears the risks, who performs the functions and who actually has the assets related to the uh, intra-group transactions and uh, they do a local fact-checking so they discuss with the, the management team, they discuss with the finance team within the taxpayer. Uh, they may request uh, discussions with uh, uh, the technical personnel that uh, actually do the work in, a, for example, a manufacturing business and they will try to challenge this functional, uh, this functional profile in order to assess uh, higher profits here uh, to the Romanian taxpayer than the one that was initially uh, allocated uh, based on the intra-group pricing. Another, um, uh, another important area uh, that the tax authorities like to challenge is related to uh, restructurings. For example, there are in the past years, we've seen a lot of conversions 
for uh, Romanian distributors, part of multinational uh, groups of companies, uh, where, uh, where these local subsidiaries are stripped of functions and are usually stripped of functions and risks, and thus they record the reduced revenue and the reduced profitability here in Romania. Again, the tax authorities look very, very uh, attentive uh, to these types of restructurings, challenging the fact that the risks and functions were actually stripped in reality from the local entity and uh, transferred to another group entity or to the mother uh, or to the mother uh, uh, company. How do they do that? They also perform discussions with uh, persons within the taxpayer in order for them to make sure that, for example, uh, uh, the marketing function that the taxpayer says uh, it was transferred to the group uh, is actually performed by the group and is not continuing to be performed by the local employees here in uh, here in Romania. So these are the most uh, important things that generally have to be uh, considered when uh, tackling the transfer pricing issue, uh, whether proactively or uh, reactively uh, during the preparation of the transfer pricing file requested in a tax audit. Going forward, we are discussing about the way in which a uh, uh, person responsible uh, with finance and tax within a Romanian taxpayer should handle the issue uh, or may handle the issue of, uh, of a tax audit. So what we've seen in practice and we also recommend it to our uh, current clients is uh, for the local management teams to um, um, provide an overview of the local of the Romanian transfer pricing legislation to the group in order for the group to understand the uh, high risk that is uh, currently posed by transfer pricing audits in Romania uh, the second stage is to try together with the, with the group to understand what are the potential transfer pricing uh, risks from a local perspective um, and usually this phase is recommended to be performed prior to a tax audit because in this way uh, the taxpayer may have uh, sufficient time in order to correct a specific situation prior to the transfer pricing audit. What is important to mention is that during a transfer pricing audit, a taxpayer cannot perform voluntarily any transfer pricing adjustments. So any transfer pricing adjustments during a tax audit may be performed only by the tax authorities based on their own assessment, which generally, as Liviu mentioned before, uh, are very aggressive and they tend sometimes to be uh, actually abusive. Uh, the, next, the, next, uh, uh, the next phase would be to uh, consider a proactive approach to prepare the transfer pricing file uh, prior to a tax audit uh, and also prepare the um, uh, justifying documentation which usually is in uh, is in a foreign language to uh, to translate it the next phase is related to an ongoing communication with the with the group transfer pricing team and if, if during a, tax, a transfer pricing audit, um, 
this ongoing communication should be doubled with, with an effective communication also with the with the tax authorities in order to uh, to provide them with all the details and with a clear uh, picture of the company's business, of the company's financial position and uh, of the company's relationship with the uh, group companies via the, the uh, related party transactions. Uh, what we want to emphasize here is also linked to the previous slide. Yeah, uh, what we have seen in practice that actually works uh, during the with the relationship uh, between the taxpayer and the Romanian tax authorities is an increased transparency be because in this way the tax authorities usually um, have more trust in what is presented in the transfer pricing file and uh, they would not request uh, too many clarifications or uh, tend to would not tend to have an, an abusive uh, an abusive approach Finally, uh, for you to understand uh, if you have an issue or not, you should uh, put yourself a couple of questions. Is the Romanian business uh, recording operating losses for a continued period of time? For example, in practice, the tax authorities raise the question, a Romanian company uh, has not been subject to a transfer pricing audit in the last 10 years, uh, but during that period it recorded losses uh, every year. Their question to the local taxpayer is how come you, you are still in business? An independent, they consider that an independent entity uh, would in these 10 years uh, go out of uh, go out of business so this is one very important question um, um, again other other issues are regarding the profitability which the Romanian taxpayer is recording whether is it at arm's length or not so at arm's length meaning if independent companies having a similar functional and risk profile uh, record losses or record uh, similar profitability. How is this performed? As I discussed earlier, we are talking about benchmarking studies that, mark, that are performed on, based on the local legislation. Um, and therefore, we consider that uh, Romanian taxpayer, when, perform, when performing uh, and preparing the transfer pricing file, should give a lot of attention to how these benchmarking studies are performed and um, to what comparable independent companies are, um, are chosen in order to demonstrate to the tax authorities that uh, they are in line with uh, with the with the market price. Um, separately, another area is with respect to uh, related party transactions that represent a very high proportion of uh, of uh, Romanian taxpayers' transactions. Um, Therefore, they may influence uh, in a high degree the revenues and the actual profitability of the Romanian taxpayer. So, in practice, the tax authorities are going to focus on these high value added transactions, uh, whereas some um, uh, low value transactions, which do not pose a great importance, are not. Uh, um, are not so drastically reviewed. Yeah. So 
these are the, the main aspects that we wanted to highlight to you with respect to the our uh, um, to the Romanian local transfer pricing environment from a legislative uh, point of view and from a transfer pricing audit and practice point of view. Um, we would welcome your uh, your questions if you have any. Uh, there are actually a couple of questions. I will uh, can see the questions and uh, our presenters can answer the same. Uh, the first question is, does that mean that in the past multiple year data was not allowed or just tax office preferred to use one year data? So, uh, in, in, in the past uh, multiple year data um, uh, could be included in the transfer pricing report. But uh, in some cases, in some cases of uh, audits, uh, the authorities did not uh, accept this approach. And because the local legislation was not very clear in this respect, it did not have any provisions other than the provisions of the OECD guidelines. Uh, in some cases, the, the inspectors took the decision to force, let's say, the year-by-year -year analysis and to perform uh, adjustments based on this year-by-year uh, analysis. The second question is, is it acceptable to have the TP documents in English or should it be translated to Romanian? Um, okay, so I will reiterate as I, as I uh, said before, the local, uh, the Romanian transfer pricing legislation uh, requires that all documentation uh, presented to the tax authorities be in Romanian English, whether we are talking about the transfer pricing file, the uh, related party uh, agreements, uh, invoices, and all support documentation must be in Romanian. Third question, is it acceptable to justify the intergroup services using the simplified approach proposed by OECD and thus do not benchmark the 5% markup? Based on, uh, based on our experience, the simplified OECD approach was not included in the local uh, tax legislation per se. So our recommendation for this type of, of services would be to have also the benchmark study analysis for the, for the markup. Next, do the Romanian tax authorities have a preferred brand of benchmarking studies? That is, for example, Bloomberg. I'm sorry, can you please repeat? Uh, do the Romanian tax authorities have a preferred brand of benchmarking studies? For example, Bloomberg platform? Um, so the Romanian tax authorities uh, use uh, basically the databases provided by Bureau Van Dijk. Um, but they don't have uh, a preferred uh, database. So the legislation does not mention anything about a preferred uh, database. Uh, any database is accepted as long as you can document the results and pre present such uh, supporting documents to the tax authorities. Next, in terms of comparable search, is it allowed to use in consolidated data provided the interdependence criteria is met? Sorry, can you, can you repeat the question? In terms of comparable search, is it allowed to use in, ro in RO consolidated data provided the interdependence criteria is met? I think they mean independence criteria. So, uh, again, no clear provisions in the legislation in this respect, but uh, generally when you perform the comparability analysis, you start with the A, A plus or A minus uh, uh, indicators. Uh, and in some cases you can extend to unconsolidated or unknown uh, ownership uh, to perform the search. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you.